How do you see 2024 being different to last year for better or, or worse? Oh, that's a big question uh, and one without notice. Certain point in time, maybe in two or three years, they're going to figure out if dad is carrying on in a way that's worthy of, you know, looking up to and admiring or what the hell is my dad doing? Or who the hell is my dad? And is that how he puts his roof over our head? That to me is like one of the scariest thoughts to think of them, them coming in and losing all respect for their dad. If you're personally attacked, you have every right to defend yourself. Like, we already know yeah, that. Sure. But if I'm not attacking you personally, but I'm critiquing the conclusion you've come to or the view that you hold, it can yeah. be really interesting to see how people respond to that. How would you describe what, what, what's your um, What's your take on it? It's, it's always hard to talk about yourself. This is like to the core of my essence we're talking now. I mean, I think... I mean, I'd love to get your thought on where you see like 2024. I thought was sorry, 2023. I thought was pretty big um, in terms of some of the movements in the high ticket space. But I'd be keen to, to see your take, especially you know, working with off owners and salespeople uh, in the same way. You, you kind of get to see both perspectives um, mm. where the online space is going. But um, how do you see 2024 being different to last year, for better or, or worse? Oh, that's a big question uh, and one without notice. Before I answer it, and I will answer it, but you, you mentioned that lots of changes in 2023. Are you referring to anything in specific that we can reference it against Yeah, or build, or build on? Yeah, probably build on, I, I suppose. Um, uh, a lot of players have dropped off last year, I, I, yeah. I see, like with, with most years. Do you mean offer uh, owners or coaches offer owners. or recruiters or offer owners? Uh, offer okay. owners, like specifically. Um, a lot of pivots in terms of business model yep. last year, more than the year before, I, I thought, with yep. um, maybe shifting to a community, subscription model was a thing, yep. kind yep. of off the, off the wave of creating like amazing offers. Yeah. Kind of shifted from that Hormozy to a different version of Hormozy, I guess. Yeah. Um, you could say. But I think a, a lot of people I noticed from, from um, last year, uh, the credibility piece and maybe the awareness of their markets uh, had gone up. So, like where where sometimes that uh, you know that helps, it also hinders. Mm -hmm. uh, with certain off owners, they're, they're, they're held more to account as awareness of the yes. marketplace goes up. They're held more to account and claims uh, and promises and indications that perhaps could have been gotten away with from a less informed market. You know, yes. years or months uh, ago. Perhaps that doesn't apply anymore. So Correct. maybe held to a higher standard. Is that sort of where you're going with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like obviously, like I think for most people, they understand uh, or, or know what FTC stands for now. <laughs> they before, do. It was, it was before, certainly in the news a bit at the end of the year. I saw that. I don't know those guys, so I have nothing personally invested in. Did they do it? Did they not do it? Are they good guys? Are they bad guys? I've never had any interactions with those guys. I've seen yeah, their names, but I don't know them. Um, you know, it didn't look great what came out. Whether it's true or not, who knows? Uh, yeah. I can only go by what came out. Um, yeah. But, you know, if, if it is true, and I have no idea if it is true or not, um, they wouldn't be the first people to make a sale based on radical claims and radical promises that were either <laughs> never going to be fulfilled or were yeah. so unlikely to be filled that they might as well never oh, have been. It's still out there now. I see it every day. Still, you really? I, cr I cringe yeah. like, at it. I, I'm, I'm surprised it still happens. But anyway... Mm. Um, you know, I mean, I won't go into that just yet, but yeah, um, I think that yeah, that, that's probably the premise of what 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 yeah, I've well, seen. Yeah, I, I think the trend will be like to your point. Less. You summarise the the standard, right? The standard I think is has been raised. I hope so because yeah. I hope so. I hope there's less of that because selfishly, I don't sell off that angle. I, I don't know. make yeah. offers off that angle. So selfishly, it serves my interest much better if the market wants more of that, and I yeah. don't have to make any changes because I already do that. Yeah, uh, which reminds me of your post the other day, actually. Which one was the other one? I posted uh, you, so which one, you, which well, one you, you, you posted something around um, like how guarantees, no, I oh, yeah. guarantees, no yep. need for that sort of stuff. Yep. yep. Um, bold claims. It's kind yep. of this is this is what it's like, and what you see is is what you get, and yep. responsibility as well on the people to understand and implement those yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 
I've, I've not always, but in, in recent years, uh, I have not sold off a guaranteed outcome, whether it was on BizOps, Mastermind, my, my coaching offer, like, as you know, I coach one-on-one and, and have a group training program. Yeah. I never, ever, ever promise an outcome. Like there's none, and I know a lot of other coaches and trainers do, and I'm not saying that's good or bad. I personally don't like it. Um, you know, 3X your commissions, double your close rate, you know, smash every objection. Like I don't go near any of that sort of stuff. Um, and, and the reason is quite simple. I don't think you can be honest uh, and, and promise that. And the reason is in any done with you offer, which coaching is, like you're only as good as a student you're working with, you know, you can do your part, but there are factors outside of your control, namely the, the, the student themselves, the prospect the student is dealing with, the market conditions in the interaction they have with their prospect when they're selling, the conditions of the offer. Like there are so many variables in play I don't see how you can pin yourself to an outcome, like learn my methodology in three extra commissions. Like I don't see how you can honestly say that. Now, does that happen as an outcome sometimes? Of course it does. Probably five times sometimes, probably 10 mm-hmm. times sometimes, probably zero times sometimes as well. Uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't go into that space. I have no interest in going into that space. So when I'm a consumer, I mean, I'm a student as well. I still buy masterminds and coaching and training and things like that. Yeah, for sure. So I know what it looks and feels like from the other side of the equation as well. Like I don't look for that. In fact, if a coach were to say something like that to me, it would be red flags left, right and center mm. to the point that I almost certainly wouldn't go with them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. the opposite of what, again, you know, the, the I'll, I'll say the standard, standard consumer, maybe that doesn't have as much awareness to begin yep. with. Yep. Uh, a few years ago, that was the thing. Like that was literally the premise of why people bought, you know? It's like, it, it all depends on who you're selling to, of course. You know, what, what does the demographic look like that you're selling to? What sort of emotional state are they in when they're potentially interacting with you? You know, what's, when I say demographic state, like as harsh as it may sound, like things like intellect and, and you know, self-view of oneself and self-esteem and things like that. You know, when I used to sell fitness back in the day in person, you know, we used to, sell really price sensitive offers that connected with the lower socioeconomic uh, segment of the market, you mm-hmm. know, down and out types. I say that with respect, uh, yeah, no, sure. no, nothing harsh against those people. Yeah. I was happy to help those people because those people often had such poor self views and such poor economic resources that this was their window of opportunity to actually come into a gym and do something about it. So it actually mm. was, was quite enriching to sell that. But here's my yes. point. These people had such a low self-awareness of health and fitness and the whole gym ecosystem and everything around fitness they had such low, I guess, experience as a general rule of thumb, exceptions always, in investing in themselves and self-improvement and holding themselves to account, you know, low resources. My point was they were in a state that if we were so inclined, we could really manipulate and and push them mm-hmm. around to get them to yes. do what we wanted, which was to write a check and come into our program. Yeah. So you had a constant balancing act as, you know, how do I do this? ethically yet make sales but not be a complete a-hole like it was just always juggling that line yeah. not saying i didn't sometimes step over it like but you know so if you're dealing with a market that's in that sort of state you know they often fall for claims like that because they're without hope often you know they're drowning and you're this boat that comes past with a life raft about to potentially throw it over to them so they're desperate they're like throw it to me please like mm. they'll do anything for you to throw that yeah. to throw that raft their way so if a market's in that sort of state, which some of us still sell to, you you can, now whether you want to and when you think it's ethical, but you can play that sort of cards with those sorts of claims and you might get away with it. Um, but if you're selling to a more sophisticated, more mature, more aware, you know, higher IQ, higher resource capability type of person, like a founder or a CEO or someone like yourself, you can't play a lot of those cards. Mm. You can't. Yes. They'll see right through it. Uh, and they will look very poorly at you, you know, so you just got to have honest conversations with them. You say things like, yeah. Hey, listen, like any coaching program, you got to show up and do your part. Like if you're mm-hmm. thinking you won't do that or you can't do that, now's the time to tell me and you shouldn't come in. <laughs> uh, when you talk to yeah. them like that, they'll convince you that, no, 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 I can do it now and I'm ready to do it now. And they'll sell themselves into the program and they have no expectations regarding an outcome. They have expectations like you're going to show up and do this for me and together we're going to do this and I'm going to be able to talk to you and, you know, like that, but that's more inputs. So yeah. the expectations are more around the inputs. I'm going to do this and you're going to do that. On the back of us doing this collectively together for the right period of time, there's a really high chance, not a guarantee, but there's a really high chance we get to a much better place. 
And that's why yeah. we're here to get to that better place. But we both got to do the work. So when you talk to them in that sort of language, A, it's ethical. B, it's the truth. C, it won't get you in trouble with the FTC. And in my experience, you sell a whole lot more than selling mm. the other way. So it's like tick, yeah. tick, 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 tick. <laughs> why the hell would I do the other way? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so that's that's my experience. Yeah, no, 100%. And I think like I, I know a lot of um, – the salesman will have different versions of um, you know how they do that, but I think the point of the matter is, is like when you finish a call, that you feel good about the outcome, regardless, right? Like if it's a, you, you want to feel good about the outcome, you want to like who you see in the mirror. You know, you've got kids, I've got kids. You know, my kids sometimes walk into when I'm I'm at my office right now, but I've got a home office as well, oh, right. and at certain times of the day, I do my calls from there. It's not uncommon for my kids to walk in and stand at the doorway and listen yeah. to dad on a call trying to close a 25k us dollar deal like it's not uncommon yeah. <laughs> uh at, they're probably still a little bit young five and seven but at yeah. a certain point in time maybe in two or three years they're going to figure out if dad is carrying on in a way that's worthy of you know looking up to and admiring or is like what the hell is my dad doing or who the hell is my dad and is that how he puts <laughs> his roof over our head like that to me is like one of the scariest thoughts to think of them, them coming in and losing all respect for their dad like, yeah, because they're watching what I do. I'm if I'm emotionally manipulating or almost blackmailing or passively aggressively gaslighting people or just lying uh, yeah, or just becoming some caricature person who's just so excited to get you started. You know, I, I don't want to go near any of that. I don't want my kids to see any of that because I don't want to be it. I don't want to become it. Yeah, I don't want to be perceived. Not, yeah, yeah. I just don't want anything to do with that. So yeah. I don't really have sympathy for people that play those cards and then pay a price for it. Uh, I think they get what they deserve um, if they legitimately did it. So, yeah, hence my comment earlier, like if that's the way the market's going, more towards authenticity and honesty and decency over hype merchants and false promises and manipulation to a degree, mm -hmm. uh, emotional manipulation, you know, to serve your outcome but not theirs, then yeah. I'm all for it. Bring it on. More of it, please. Bring it on, yeah. <laughs> and if people get taken out by it, good riddance. Well, that's, that's what I was going to yeah, that's what I was going to say is um, I think it will present opportunity like more than anything else for, you know, for the, for the good people. Yeah. Um, what, what do you, what do you feel? Cause I, yeah, people will, will inevitably disappear from that mm -hmm. um, and because of it and maybe with the mm -hmm. standards or whatever it is and they try to pivot. Mm -hmm. Where do you see as maybe as a business owner and, you know, someone selling in, in the space, like w where do you see the opportunity kind of go and, and how can people take take advantage of that? I haven't thought too much about it, like outside of this conversation right now with you because you're bringing it up. I haven't thought about it too much on the macro, like what are all these guys going to mm. do? And I'm, I'm more thinking about it selfishly about what I see and what's in my world, like mm. yeah, the selling ecosystems I'm still in, my coaching program, those that I train and coach and come to me asking for help. It's, yeah. So I'm more looking at those people. Because sure. they're the ones that I can influence uh, and have some degree of control uh, over to a, to a point. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, what the Cowboys are doing, if you want to call them that, like I'm not really – I don't really pay any attention to them, to be honest. They mm. operate in a different world to what I operate in. Like I just yeah. I just don't – I'm not going to say I don't care because what they do affects our reputation. Like salesmen already have a terrible reputation and it's largely deserved because of the caricature of what a salesman yes. is. Oh, we're not all yeah. like this, by the way, but the caricature is, and we think it ourselves, when we're prospects, we think it ourselves. Pushy, needy, self-serving, say anything for a sale, you know, your new best friend because they want the money in your pocket, but as soon as the sale's done, especially if you come back the next day and ask for a refund, like a complete different person. So, yeah. you know, I know that exists. I know that's out there. I know how that's created. Um, a big part of my positioning and what I do and how I act is is a visceral negative reaction to that. Um, so I basically go the opposite. Um, so I don't really spend too much time thinking about those that still go down that path because mm -hmm. what will be will be with those people. Um, yeah. I don't know whether it's going to increase significantly, like being honest, like disarming mm -hmm. through honesty uh, yeah. and authenticity. I don't know. I just know that those that are doing it well are getting phenomenal results, not just in terms of sales, but yeah. in terms of, just the energy they're projecting energy. and the energy they're creating yeah. and how they are as people and how they feel yeah. on the back of every interaction and just all those sorts of things. So that's where my energy is uh, in mm. those, you know, that are open to coming into this world or already are. I'm not necessarily looking to pontificate and recruit all these, you know, convert all these people. Like it's not my job. It's not my brief.
Yeah, know, for sure. If what they're doing is working for them and they're happy doing it, well, I'm not going to tell them they're wrong. Like, mm. I personally want nothing to do with them, but yeah, they probably don't care. <laughs> they probably don't know who I am or don't care. So yeah, you know, yeah. we'll just do what we're going to do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And and what do you think for, like in terms of, uh, you know, we've got business owners, we've got sales reps. Traditionally, the sales reps are the, the people that get hired and, you know, you kind of get, uh, you know, maybe maybe recruited or or, or referred, uh, yep. but now, especially over the last, I would say, maybe at least twelve months, maybe eighteen months, even that, a lot more sales reps are treating it as like an act. Well, it is their own business, right? Because if you don't sell, mm-hmm. you don't get paid; it's commission mm-hmm. only. Mm-hmm. Um, but now there's a lot more care in terms of personal branding. It's, mm-hmm. it's a, I, I think it's been a bigger topic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know how long it dates back to, but I, I, I think more recently it's becoming more relevant and needed yep. um, out there. Yep. What, what's yep. your What's your take yeah. on that? Well, firstly, if you are a 1099 using the US terminology, effectively mm-hmm. commission only, you're, yeah. you're, you're not an employee, they're not your employer, which means they're not your boss. They're actually your client. You know, yes. you are a service provider and they are your client. So that and that's important because... So many, well, I think it's important because it sets the tone of the relationship. So, so many people sign, this could go off on a massive tangent, so I won't go there, but so many people are in the 1099 uh, commission only contractor uh, dynamic, which is fine. Yeah. I am too. Uh, I personally yeah. only want to do that when I'm working with a client. I don't yeah. want a base salary or a retainer because I don't want it to own me and I don't want it sure. to move into employee employer dynamic. I want it to be as it is. So, you know, firstly, understand they're your client, not your boss. Uh, and in the in the interaction we have right now, you can't you need to treat yourself as an equal. I'm not saying mm-hmm. you are equal partner in their business and you have equity. No, I'm not saying any of that. But in the dynamic of they have a need, uh, which is a you know a warm body to turn these leads into sales, hopefully, uh, and you know you're able to make that need go away. In the same way that if something happens in your house today, you call up a plumber or an electrician. You know they're not your employee. You know you have a need. You need that problem to be taken away. So you call yes. those people, they do the job, you pay them, they get what they need out of it, you get what you need out of it, everyone feels good, you know. Um, so in a way, it's a bit like that. It's just a longer term relationship than coming to your house for three hours and mm. then leaving. So that's there as a star point. But in terms of, so if you're going to embrace that concept, well, we've just agreed you're not an employee. Well, yes. if you're not an employee, you're running your own business. Uh, and it serves you to realize that and then to act accordingly because no one else is going to have your best interest at heart. Why would they? Like, you know, I don't mm. wake up in the morning thinking of random people that I know. Why would, why would we've, and we've agreed they're not your boss. So, you know, why would your client be looking out for your best interest? It doesn't mean you can't have a good relationship and they can't help you, but they got other things that are more important to them than worrying about your prosperity um, mm. to, to yes. a degree, to a degree. Within the ecosystem they control, they want you to be prosperous because that means they are too. Yeah. But if you're the sort of person who's working on three offers simultaneously and you're just one of the three, like they're not going to help you with the other two. Why would they? It's not mm. in their best interest. Yeah. Um, so you need to do that yourself. Uh, and part of turning this into the business of business of you uh, or you, Inc., as our friends at, um, mm-hmm. at UCM call it, um, who are really big on branding as well. You probably know that, JD and yes. Hunter and those guys. Yeah. Um, I, did, I went through that program back in the day and, and they're great at that. Um, but part of it is, is telling your story. I mean, your brand now is such a huge part of you being successful in what we do. Like, yes, of course, you've got to get good at sales and keep investing in your sales capabilities and confidence and skill set and keep moving forward in all that. Of course you do. It's not Mm. mutually exclusive, Yes, but you can't just rely on your sales skills because if you do, then only people that know you intimately will, will be, you know, cheering you on and in your corner. Yeah, um, I did a post on this the other day, you know, I, I brought 60 people into my group training program within th- the first three weeks that I launched it. Mm-hmm. Most of those people I didn't know. Most of those, pe- no advertising, all organic. Um, most of those people I didn't know. Most of those people I'd never spoken to with none of them, apart from the one or two I grandfathered in like James Lawrence, um, none of them had heard me on a sales call. Yep. So they hadn't come to the conclusion that I was worth paying attention to and could learn something from as far as the sales things go based off a lived experience of either being on the end of a sales call with me or having heard yep. 10 of my sales calls. Yes. They, 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 they came to that realization and conclusion 
on the back of the brand I created for what of a better word, like the positioning yeah. strategy that I adopted, like who am I, what I want people to think about me, how yeah. I want people to perceive me, you know, everything in that space. Yeah. The content strategy I developed, which was, you know, basically just the deliverer of the message to reinforce my positioning strategy. Who am yeah. I? Why should you pay attention to me? What am I good yeah. at? What am I different at? And then the networking, the relationships I built, which again reinforced my positioning strategy. So on the back of that, I was able to sell about 60 uh, group um, memberships to my six month program within three weeks. And I did like three sales calls, like 56 mm. or 57 <laughs> of them came in just through DMs, like, hey, can yeah. I come in your program? Pretty much. Um, yeah, so if that doesn't tell you that branding works to some degree, and those numbers are nothing compared to others. Don't get me wrong, I'm not flexing on those numbers. Like if you look at other offer owners and marketers, like that's nothing. That's like an hour's work or something like that. Sure. It's just to illustrate the point that none of those people heard me on a sales call or had me sell to them and they realized that, hey, I'm worth paying attention to regarding sales. Yeah. And then on the back of that, they actually made a purchase of, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars um, dollars So that's just one example of many we could give about positioning leading into branding with content backing it up and networking backing it up. And it can create a complete different reality for you. Like you don't have to do it. Don't get me wrong. You can achieve mm. a certain degree of success if you don't do any of this. Yeah. But my my thoughts would be if, if you're if you're pat say a nine out of ten in sales ability, but you're a one or a two out of ten in terms of brand and positioning and network, you're like no one basically thinks of you if they don't know you. And let's say just for the sake of the argument, I'm a straight eights. I'm an eight out of ten in sales. So you're better than me in sales, but I'm an eight out of ten in all those other areas. I yeah. would I would wager that more often than not, I'll get better outcomes than you do. Because I'll be yeah, connected to the great. right people with the right offers who will think of me and put me in roles and they never yeah. saw or heard of you, so you never got a chance. Now, having gone head to head, they may have chosen you, but you never got on their radar. I think that's it. That's, that's... So, and I did. So I got the role and you didn't. And eight out yeah. of ten, eight out of ten is usually good enough to be successful in a sales role. <laughs> so who cares that you're nine out of ten, I'm eight out of ten. You didn't even get yeah. a shot. I did. So, you know, I would argue that would happen more often than not. Um so with that in mind, to me, you've got to have a brand. If you're ambitious and if you don't want to be thought of as a faceless, nameless commodity who, you know, does group interviews and types interested under every job post and has to apply for jobs and has to do a three minute intro video, like I don't do any of that stuff uh, yeah. at all. Um, and those that, are, those that are really good and have a brand and have recognition, they don't do that stuff either. Yeah. So it just depends sure. on who you want to become. Like, who do you want to be? Do you want to be a, yeah. a guy or, or a lady that's playing that game? Well, that's fine if you do, no problems. Or do you want to be a person that opportunities come to you or come through you or you're one degree of separation away from at any given time and yeah. you can just reach out to somebody and things just start happening? Yeah, for sure. Do you want to be? It, 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 all, it, all, it all adds up. I think it's really important to, um, like I said, you got, kind of choose your pathway, right, and then you act accordingly. I remember... Um, it would have been, oh, if I look back at our DMs, Michael, it would have been probably two years ago. You or me? Yeah. When we, yeah, when, about that. when we were talking about, you know, like the angle and the, like, it was very calculated. Obviously the, the launch was, was, was great and you got 60 members, but it didn't happen. You didn't plan it like a day before and, and decided no. that this was going to happen. Right. And it was very calculated. No, I, I made a decision about a year before I launched my group training program that yeah, I wanted I to remember. do it. Um, and uh, so I first did one-on-ones for about a year before I did it because I wanted to, I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted to confirm that I liked coaching and training people uh, mm-hmm. in this world. I've done it in the real world, um, but in this virtual world that we're all in, I wanted to confirm I liked it and I was good at it. I wanted to yep. confirm they could get results. I wanted to confirm what they were most receptive to and move the needle on what was you know not that big a deal. So I wanted to get clarity and all of that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Plus, I wanted to get a bunch of raving fans and testimonies as well on the back of that. Yeah. And just, you know, everything I needed to feel confident that if I'm going to go to market with a group offering, there actually might be some people that actually care enough to carry some money yeah. and jump on in. So yeah. I planned it about a year ahead. Now, mm. I was never about getting like 2,000 members in the first year. If I had done that, I would have done it differently. I would have done a truckload of advertising, would have got coaches and outsourced everything. I'm playing the long game here. So I don't mind if it takes me a bit longer to get big numbers than other coaches or training programs i don't mind like i'm patient plus i still sell and i, I get pretty good results from that too mm-hmm. so i'm playing the long game i'd rather build out a quality product with the right people and getting amazing results yeah. and move slower than than the, than the opposite of all of those things so that yeah. was a, a calculated decision like to me quality is more important than speed 
Uh, yeah. there's, there are certain situa- situations where I would sweep, you know, flip that around, but I'm mm. not going anywhere. I, I like this world. I like selling. I like the game of sales. I like the levels that exist. You know, I mm. like that I've still got things to learn. Um, I like the game of going into a call with somebody smarter or better than you at certain things yeah. and <laughs> at the end they ask to buy from you. And, you know, 30 minutes later, I did it today. I had a call. This, I had one call this morning with my client. I still sell with one client. Um, super successful entrepreneur. One of, he's got multiple businesses. One is in the billions mm. uh, in, the, in the storage space in the States, in warehouse storage. And um, we spoke for 40 minutes. We'd never met before. And at the end of the call, he got his Amex out and 24K US. And, mm. he, you know, he couldn't. He asked to buy from me. I didn't sell to him. He asked to buy from me. And he felt good about it. And I felt good about it. Like, I love that challenge. He's 20 years yeah. older than me. He's, you know, he's more successful than I am objectively. <laughs> I just love that challenge. I love the game of going up. When I say against, it's not like me versus you, but on some level it is. Uh, you know, yeah. I just love it the challenge. Right? It's, yeah. it's fun. I find it really stimulating. And we have incredible conversations. Um, like, I, I don't see myself stopping to do that. So I'm playing the long game. You know, I'm not trying to, like, exit in a year and retire at the beach. Like, I expect to still be doing this in five years and probably ten years. As a result, I'm happy to move slow to get it right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I, I can I can relate to to all of that. Um, mm. And I think a lot of people, well, at, at least for the last few years, they they come and go because it just, you know, they, they, they don't enjoy the game of it mm-hmm. um, or they try to find different ways, not because they want to expand, but they just don't like what they're doing, you know, yep. and yep. I think that's that's. I agree. I think a lot of salespeople don't enjoy selling and, mm. and, and they either don't enjoy it because it's just like no matter what, they're not going to enjoy it. It just isn't congruent with what gets mm. them excited and motivated yeah. and whatnot. Others, they don't like it because of the way they sell, you know, back to what we were saying at the start of the call. Mm. Yeah. You know, they have to become a caricature person and get so excited for the prospect and can't wait to get you started. Uh, you know, try doing that 10 times a day. Um, they they yeah, may have exactly. to lie, they may have to mislead or they may choose to. Um, you know, without getting too wrapped up in tactics, they might not be able to hard qualify them and ask real questions. They might mm. not present price until the end and, you know, decision-making capabilities and they're finding out about the wife or the husband on two-thirds of their calls at minute 45 after they tried to close them. And mm. most of the time, those are not turning into sales after the objection battle. Of course, some do. Yeah. They're just like, this sucks. Like, this is not a fun way to fun. interact. Like, I do 10 calls a day. You know, eight of them, as soon as I present price, they become a completely different person uh, or they all of a sudden, you know, tell me about this wife that wasn't mentioned until now mm. or for the first time ever, they tell me that, you know, they're shopping around and they're still three months away from being ready. It's your fault. You didn't ask the right questions. Like, why mm. are you surprised? You didn't ask the right questions. But if you do that for a long enough period of time, you know, if you're doing 10 calls a day and eight of them look like that. <laughs> it's yeah, it's pretty tough. And it's then you tough. look at yeah, your, you know, your calendar that. and go, <laughs> you look at your calendar and go, oh, another day of this. I already yeah. know that eight of these calls are going to end up in an objection battle at the end. And, you know, maybe one of them turns into a sale. I don't know, maybe two of them. But do you really want to be doing that? It's totally avoidable. So I think mm-hmm. a lot of them don't like sales because of the way they sell. And they don't know a different way. It's not their fault. I'm not saying it's their fault either, by the way. I have sold like that in the past. I didn't know better. Uh, I didn't know you could have real conversations right at the start. I didn't know you could push them away. I didn't know you could make them do the justifying and pleading and dancing Mm. rather than you as the salesperson. You can do all those Mm. things if you know how uh, and if you're prepared to do it. Yeah, I think that's it. You know, you got to. And when you are, and when you are, and you get on the other side of it, sales becomes really good fun. Mm. Uh, So I, I look at every interaction as just having an honest conversation between two adults. And let's try and bring some fun to it. I mean, don't get me wrong. We can go serious and, you know, really deep when we need to. But we can also play around and have a bit of fun. Um, And I'm going to be okay whether it's a sale or not. It's not going to affect my mood for the rest of the day. Unless I really dropped the ball and it was my fault. Like I really misread that situation. I asked a stupid question and I couldn't recover. Then I'll be angry at myself for a moment, learn my lesson. But you got to move on. If you're doing eight or ten calls a day, which I don't anymore but I have in the past, you can't hold on to that negative energy for too long. You're going to carry it into other calls. Yeah, it's going, going to affect the other calls. And then you're going to get more negative outcomes. So you're in like a negative vacuum now. This is not going to end well. Um, mm. So again, it's all avoidable if you know how. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No, mm. I, I love that. Anyway, the, 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 um, 
I guess the character that you you carry along, um, and it's consistent as long as I think it's as long as it's consistent with like who you want to be, like as a person. I think that's mm-hmm. always going to come out better. Um, yep. Which you know just reminded me of a conversation that we were having um, about how you got on the podcast with Jeremy. Um, yeah, and, and and I didn't know the story. I just watched the podcast. I didn't realize it came from a. A bit of uh, backwards and forwards in the comment section of uh, one of your yeah, posts. Look, look, I you've probably seen this. Uh, I invite, and we've touched on it a little bit already on this call today. Mm, yeah, I invite real conversations and real conversations. It come. I invite it both ways, by the way. Like, there's an open invitation to come on my wall and tell me I'm wrong about this position or I've articulated myself poorly in this way or whatever. Like, I, I won't go personal on you, and I. We prefer if you don't go personal on me because it lowers the whole tone. And then I got to go like, uh, do I go personal back? Do I take the high ground? Do I block this person? Like, let's just not go personal. Let's keep it about the argument or the position or the belief. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, leave the person out of it unless it's absolutely needed, um, which is rarely the case. Um, so you know, I I dish it out, and I but I, if ever I critique somebody's position or argument or conclusion or whatever it is. Firstly, I never critique the person. Uh, and secondly, I explain how and why I don't believe believe or see that as the case. And if appropriate, I'll, I'll add, you know, I see it this way instead for these reasons. So to mm-hmm. me, it's a fleshed out, you know, counter argument. And to me, it's also an invitation to chat, you know, to come come in and tell me I'm wrong. Like tell me my, mm-hmm. my interpretation of your conclusion or whatever it is tell me i'm wrong and tell me how i'm wrong and, and if if your argument's good enough i'll be forced to reconsider my position mm. otherwise i'll be stupid because yeah. you just showed me that i'm wrong and if i don't listen to that if i <laughs> if your argument's good enough like show me yeah. uh, but it's a bit of fun as well like not enough people do it in my game like i don't go on bagging people as i already said no personal attacks uh i'll articulate it you know i'll, I'll say my piece mm. And to me, it's, it's acceptable to do that because if, if you post content out there in the public sphere, which, which I do and you do mm, yeah, and yeah. others do, well, to me, that's an invitation for a conversation. You've got to expect that, yeah. And the conversation doesn't necessarily have to agree with your position. Mm. In fact, yes. it's more fun when it doesn't. Yeah. So yeah, it's just perspective, right? Different yeah, they're, perspective. All, they're, all, they're all big boys that I've, I've done it to. But, um, you know, I'll go on there and, and I'll – offer a critique uh and you're welcome to then critique the critique and we can go back Mm. and forth and you'll you'll show everybody how you think and how you unpack and defend your ideas and how you come to the conclusions that you do which is incredibly interesting to see you know is it a throwaway line that you've got or you're parroting somebody else or have you actually thought about it and can defend the position and okay i don't necessarily agree but i respect the way you've come to that conclusion i can see how you've come to it i didn't come to the same but fair enough you know we'll agree to disagree Uh, so there's a bit of that and look, not enough people do it. And in my view, and I find Mm. it interesting. So, so I, so the way the Jeremy thing came about, I didn't even know it was about him. Uh, I took us, I got involved in a chat on some, someone's page and, um, and it ended up being a quote about one of his cold calling, uh, scripts or techniques. And Mm. I I screenshot that and put it online and then provided a critique to it Mm. saying why I didn't agree with it and why I didn't like it and what, principles for me it was in violation of and left it at that no big deal a couple of you know bit of back and forth with people as normal no big deal and then jeremy yeah. well, i believe it was jeremy's va based on what he told me uh and he said this on his podcast so this isn't confidential he, J- jeremy's va ended up ended up because apparently it was jeremy's quote i didn't know that um yeah uh, and jeremy and the jeremy's va should i say ended up on my wall and you know had an put an interesting position then mm. It came in, came in pretty yeah. strong, and yeah. um, I didn't engage with anything personal. I, I took the high ground and kept it about the argument. And then I think the real Jeremy turned up, and uh, the the real Jeremy turned up, and we went back and forth a bit. But it was all it was all highbrow. It was about the argument. Mm. No yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, ended I with him inviting me onto his podcast to have a chat about. I think human behavior was the words he used, mm. uh, yeah. and I accepted that invitation. And it was a good natured chat. We had two calls. Um, we spoke the day before the podcast, which was meet and greet, just, I guess, to check each other out. Mm. It was very much in the spirit of the podcast. It was the same tone and energy and 
We just yeah. asked about our influences and what was important to us and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then you saw the podcast and mm. I thought it was a good conversation. You know, I thought he's, it was got good. His, he's got his approach. I've got mine. We agree on some things. We definitely have differences on others. That's normal. You and I, Pat, would, would be the same. There'd be things that you think are best practices that I'd go, mm, not for me and vice versa. Like, mm. that's fine. Both can be true, by the way. You know, what works for you can be true and what works for me can be true in terms of what we yes. view as best practices or most appropriate ways to do it here. Yep. So we had a bit of back and forth, but it was all good natured and respectful. And to me, that was like a perfect play in the sense that we had a public disagreement. It ended in having a conversation. There was respect. There was dignity. You know, we explored some ideas and thoughts, found a lot of common ground, maybe a few mm. differences here and there. But to me, I would like to see more of that personally. Uh, yeah, I, me too. I think that would be quite interesting. Like I'd like to see... I kind of don't know if you're a controversial figure and you like challenging um, viewpoints and having quasi debates, but let's say you did, you know, I'd like to see you on a podcast with, I don't know, another strong, strongly opinionated, <laughs> opinionated person. That could be a bit of fun. <laughs> oh, look, I, I'm happy to go down with anyone, anyone who wants to, to have a conversation. <laughs> you're too nice though, Pat. Your, your, your public <laughs> is too nice. If there's yeah, a, uh, if, there's a let's roll up, if there's a let's roll up the sleeves and have a bit of a joust, Side yeah. to you, I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, I'd like to yeah. Well, I, I probably don't do it in public. <laughs> I, yeah. I would say, yeah, I, I probably well, do it not more. part of your not part of your brand, Pat. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, your brand. Yeah, I, I guess in yeah in, in my uh, way of dealing with with things, um, mm. you know, unless I'm strongly uh, opinionated about something, which I I, I, t I generally am not. I think I I think you you even said it. Um, we we talked about this a long long time ago. I, I'm really of the best idea wins yep. type of type of model. Yep. Um, and how, like, what do I know if it's the best or not? I, I I try to take as much perspective and angles on it before I um, have a strong opinion on it. If I ever do have a strong opinion on it, so um, you know that's probably why I'm, I'm I, I wouldn't be as vocal um, unless I. I try something and I just know, you know, like it just doesn't work or it does work. Yep. Um, you know, that's probably yep. what, what it is. But, um, mm. you know, I think it, it, it's interesting that we have, yeah, it, it's, it, for me, it's great to watch, uh, you know, a lot of these mm. uh, people, because like you said, it's, it's in the way that they think that it comes across as if that's what you're looking for. That's what I look yep. for. It's not so much the response. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so why did they say that? Like, are they are they being defensive here or are they being a little bit insecure? Maybe they, yeah. they've got some insecurities that they're trying to hide. Something. And it's really, it's re you learn so much about a person when their argument or their position is attacked. Now, you learn mm. more, you learn the same if they're personally attacked. But personally attacked is a different category and I don't really want to go into that because if you're personally attacked, you have every right to defend yourself. Like, we already know yeah, that. Sure. But if I'm not attacking yeah. you personally, but I'm – critiquing the conclusion you've come to or the view that you hold or yeah. the sweeping yeah. statement that you made or the generalization or something, whatever it is, effectively the argument. It can yeah. be really interesting to see how people respond to that. Mm. You know, some's natural defense is to make it personal right away. Or, yes. You know, play the status card or what would you know, yeah. or, you know, you know, anything yeah. like that. That can be interesting. <laughs> that can be quite insightful. Others are masters at handling, you know, politician style like when they're under attack under siege they're masters at deflecting or reversing it back onto you or asking you questions to put it back onto you or to mm. taking all the tension out of the room and like it's just very interesting to see all yeah. of this translates to a sales call as well so this is where a lot of the relevance in, in it is you know yeah. all of this this exact so. same skill set and the and a lot of the principles in play here 100 percent translate to a sales call especially when things are not going your way, i.e. objections, friction, resistance, yes. <laughs> pushback, they're trying to take frame, they're trying yeah. to box you around on the call, just tell me the price, you know. Like yeah. it's the same skill set that you're drawing from in this. So you mm. learn a lot about the person, especially if they're in sales and yeah. you know, they're positioned as a sales guru or a coach or, you know, high esteem figure. It's very interesting. That's, that's I find it yeah. endless, endlessly fascinating. It'd be good I if there was it. some sort of like – I don't know, like a challenge series or debate series or I, I don't know how you do it, but like... Oh, we could do it. <laughs> pitch it all against each other. <laughs> yeah. Who's the throw last one standing? Yeah. Yeah. I'll nominate yeah. for that if you do that. <laughs> throw, throw your views throw your views in the ring and let's see, you know, yeah. let's have a healthy debate about it. What is it? Yeah. It's like... Um, 
uh, I, I don't even know what to call them, but I think it would be a cool. It would be a cool thing to to witness. It's almost like um, gladiator of the minds type of thing. Well, Alan, <laughs> Alan it would be quite interesting to to host. Alan's- that. Yeah, Alan Sultanik famously has, he said this publicly many times, mm. he's, he's got like a public challenge to, I think, to copywriting. Uh, yeah. Copy, I think it's yeah, copywriting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he could yeah. do quite a few things because he's in so many different aspects of the online yes. marketing. But I think, I'm pretty sure it's copywriting. He's basically got some open offer for any copywriter to come on and have some sort of live challenge with him. And he, he says, you'll, yeah. for scratch. all comers, you know, form your yeah. line, I'll take you all on. Yeah. I, I, I would like an equivalent in, uh, in what that would we be do. Cool. It'd be a lot of fun. Let's talk about it. Well, <laughs> we can we can discuss it. behind the scenes and <laughs> come up with. I, I I would be I would be fascinated by it. I think it'd be cool um, to to do it and uh, you know work out logistically what what that would look like. Whether it's you know a topic maybe that 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 comes from somebody else and gets debated, or a topic that you have that gets debated uh, and your points of views challenge. It could, it could be it could be a fun YouTube show. Maybe you it and I should a, make it together, Pat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that could be a fun. Yeah, uh, I reckon that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's that's my take. So that's how I look at it. Look, yeah, I dish awesome. it out, so I'm more than happy to take it. You know, I'm a big boy. Uh, yeah. I, I stand by my, by my positions if I commit to them in writing or, or in words. But having said that, sometimes you change positions as well. You know, what you yeah. thought was true oh, or sure. practices today is not the case in a year or two. And yeah. you're kind of stupid if you're still of the same position in everything a couple of years later. Like, what world exists where you didn't actually learn something new or have a new lived experience that forced you to re calculate you know what was yeah. true or what was best practices like i'm always changing yeah um sure. That's not necessarily on a principle level but tactically uh or, or certain beliefs wise all the time yeah yeah for sure for sure i think that's super valuable to hear anyway for everybody but um michael it's always fun always fun that, that went that went quick that went quick i know <laughs> We said at the start, would we be would we be controversial? Controversial. I said, why not? Was that controversial in the end? <laughs> hey, I, I mean, I had fun. <laughs> I thought that was, yeah, that was super super interesting, and I think we've got some ideas to walk away with uh, trying to create something a little bit more fun. Off the Can I ask you one last question before we go? Yeah. Sure. So you, you asked me about branding earlier and the importance of branding. Mm-hmm. Are you are you um, entirely across you know your positioning in the marketplace and the brand that? you know, Patrick Galang has and yeah. how you want to project yourself to the world and how you want others to think of you and, and interact with all things yeah. you like. And if so, would you be happy to share in that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, like f- for me, I kind of have two very distinct um, positions, mm-hmm. one with business owners and one with salespeople. Mm-hmm. Um, most of my branding, I would say not necessarily by um on, on purpose, but they, they always had two sides, you know, to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the last 12 months, I, I've gotten, I think, really clear on, um, you know, the, the, the type of brand that, that I wanted to be and probably more importantly, the people that I wanted to associate with mm-hmm. uh, in terms of business and, and, yeah, the people that I, that I wanted to, yeah, to be part of. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, for the for the... For quite a few months, towards the end of last year, I, I actually stopped posting. I noticed like that. that. I did notice that. Yeah, I went yeah. really quiet. Yeah. Um, that's because, uh, you know, at at some point, uh, the branding that I had, I I wanted to just revamp a little bit and make it more about what currently that I'm that I'm working on. Whereas before, I was trying to just keep pushing down the same same line and same messaging. Uh, and because as I evolved, it's like, okay, I need to figure out like what am I actually trying to do here? And so I went deep into the work with clients mm-hmm. uh, behind the scenes and kind of figured out, hey, this is like stuff that I actually want to share and talk about. And mm-hmm. um, the reason why I stopped is um, a couple of things. I was pretty busy, but I stopped enjoying putting content out there. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like it became a bit of a labor to do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And I know when it gets gets difficult like that for me, it's it means that I'm not I'm not in line with the pathway that I'm that I'm going down. So, okay, uh, yeah, that took a little bit of um, yeah reflection and time and um and and in doing so, I got really clear on the pathway that I'm that I'm leading down um, at the moment, which. And what does that look? What does that look like? Can you share that, or is that still? Yeah, no. Uh, I, mean, it, I think it'll always be a work work in progress. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, my I, I would say the way that uh, I've been working over the last three or four years 
mm-hmm. uh, has been very much around collaborating and mm-hmm. trying to expand uh, ways of thinking and and helping mm-hmm. be in a better position than when you first started. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, whatever that looks like, and everyone's got a lot of different goals, um, and it's, and and so that's kind of what I've found in the last yeah few it, months. It's interesting you use the word collaborator then, because if I were to think of your brand, what I perceive your brand to be, that would be mm-hmm. one of the words I would use: collaborator. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Because you, you you seem to be a guy that is in a lot of different aspects of the world that we're in, and has the mm-hmm. ability to move easily between yeah. levels and groups, and there's a collaboration to everything you do. It's not sort of binary, my way, come with me or, you know, something like that or transactional. It genuinely seems collaborative. So that, yeah. that would definitely be a word that I would associate with you as far as your brand goes. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And it is really what uh, I think of, um, I tried to articulate over, like, especially the middle of last year, but I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't get it to, um, to translate over yep. you know because it was yep. either while well, i was posting about a one-dimensional thing or another yeah uh, and even at some point i'm i'm thinking man i'm not i'm i probably need to follow some sort of guideline around that mm. um but i just didn't i just didn't i just couldn't fit it into any of those you know so mm. um so Leah, like with anything sometimes you just go with what you feel is is right yeah, yeah. um and then like you know, you have maybe you, you, you don't need to follow the rules um, and you let the market kind of tell you if you're in the right path or not yep. um, as well, yep. you know. Yep. So uh, that, that's kind of how I came to, to where, where we're at now. And, and and the new program that you've released, that sounds to me, I mean, I haven't seen it, but quite a few guys from my coaching program are in it hmm. um, or have spoken to you about coming into it. And from yeah. what I understand, that's all about collaboration as well, which yeah. ties in with that, that word again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then uh, like everything that I uh, built that particular, this particular community around is for, for people to be able to express and explore opportunities mm-hmm. other than what they're doing currently, uh, mm-hmm. which, you know, for most people that come in, it's it's very commission-based and commission-driven mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. maybe working with a couple of clients, but mm-hmm. they don't necessarily have a, a, a career path that they can follow. Uh, because there's not there's not that many ladders to climb in some of the businesses mm-hmm. that we're working with, so sometimes you have to fabricate or create fabricate, maybe not the word, but to create those things. Yeah, yeah, or um, move on to another client, or move on to, so to maybe, maybe else. you only do three to six months with this client before it's exhausted or you're tired of each other or yeah, moved whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, a lot of that is the conversations that we're having inside of the community mm-hmm. uh, and going with you know being collaborative and. Um, you know, being able to expand networks. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That's that's kind of the main parts of, uh, I guess, why people, you know, I mean, so far in, in the last month, uh, we've got 27 members, mm-hmm. I think, in the last um, 30 mm-hmm. days uh, of, of putting this out there, which is more than what I what I expected for the first month. Yep. Um, but it's it's got, I feel like it's got a, a, also a little bit of um, exclusivity behind it, which... Um, yep which I really like and get to know every single member uh, in yep. there. And like, exactly like you said before, I mean, you could probably, lo- you could have launched this, your program to the moon, right? But that's the quality long-term yep. Yep. rather than the quantity and, and quick cash. Yep. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what I've, what I've gone for. And there's people in there that I'm collaborating with now. So I, I, I think that I've, as far as my positioning is concerned, that's kind of what I've, what I've found and looking back, that's what I've always done. I just never mm. translated, you mm. know, into into the right um, format of and, and the branding that I had before. So, yep, that's kind yep. of how I. Came uh, about what it. would you say? What would you say as an outsider looking in, if you were to think of say my positioning or branding for whatever better word, if if I choose the word collaborative would be the first <laughs> word that comes to mind for me. What would what would be the equivalent? Your first word, word that you won't offend that me comes to word. mind. <laughs> well, I, I probably couldn't think of like. You know, one one word, mm-hmm. um, but 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 I, I I don't know if this is the right word from it because you know we talk about it a little bit. But um, you know, to to me, what what stands out for for your brand is just the way you frame things. Perspective is kind of what I what what I, what I come up with. You just have you just have conviction in in the way you do things, um, and you're so sure of yourself. But also flexible enough for, for ideas, right? Um, I've learned a lot from talking talking to you 
just in just in random right random chats or things like that uh, picked off little bits and pieces um like yep. i said best idea wins uh, i mean that always stuck with me when we when we talked about that uh, a while back um hard to describe actually i just because because i know your brand so yeah yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. it's like i i think because i also uh, i know to, to the people who you who, who you sell to and the clients that you associate with um it's uh, like it, it's it's high quality you know it's like world class that's that's mm-hmm. kind of my uh, my, my take so okay. I'll take that thank you <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing there uh, was inconsistent with what I was hoping to hear so yeah I'll take that. yeah, yeah sure. well, how would you describe what, what, what's your um, what's your take on it for yourself it's it's always hard to talk about yourself uh, is, yeah. but, but I guess I mean I just spent an hour talking about myself on your <laughs> podcast so that sounds a bit ridiculous <laughs> but uh, this is like this is like to the core of my essence we're talking now yeah I mean I think Like there's a reason I called my coaching program True Sales Pros, Mm. Uh, true being the key word there. Like for me, and the first thing I teach, you know, everyone in the program is we're here for the truth. You know, in every interaction I have in a sales situation, it starts with the first principle for me is we're here for the truth. Yeah. Not I'm here to sell to you or I'm here to turn you into a piff. You know, none of that sort of stuff. Like that stuff is outcome. That's an outcome from the inputs that you do during the sales call, them even being open to it and it being possible in the first place, like things have got to go a certain way. Uh, you can't ultimately control whether you sell to the person or not. You know, yes. that's an outcome or a symptom. Uh, but you can control what you focus on and what you do on a call and what you deliver. And for me, it always starts with the truth. I'm here for the truth. And the truth may be that you've got a better option than buying from me today. The truth may be you don't actually need what I'm selling to you. The truth may be the competitor across the road is a better option for you. I'm yes. open to all of those things. Mm. Uh, but the truth also might be that you believe we can help you, you want us to help you, you don't have a better alternative, you can say yes to our terms and conditions and you can't wait to get started. If those things are in play, and I'm going to ask you questions so that we can realize that, uh, you're going to have to buy from me. Um, mm. So I'd like to think the word true uh, and that's why I'm not afraid to have tough conversations. And you said I have conviction earlier. Well, um, if I do, if it comes across that I do, like when this may sound arrogant, but if you feel the truth is on your side, <laughs> if, if you feel the truth is on your side, which I do, it's very hard. It's very easy to have conviction because mm-hmm. I got nothing to hide. Now, if I'm making up all these claims, like three X your commission, double your close rate tomorrow, like they're mostly pretty hollow arguments. Like Mm. someone like me can pick that apart pretty quickly. I just have to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. And (laughs) now now I've got you dancing, you know, you can't do that to me because I don't make claims like that. Yeah. Yeah, So when you're coming at it from that angle, like it's very easy to have conviction because I've got nothing to hide. Like come at me. I've already told you what I do. Uh, And this is part of the reason why I do stuff like price up front and have hard conversations at the start of a call. Like I've got nothing to hide. Like, do you really think we're not going to discuss price at some stage on this call? Of course we yeah, are. We both exactly. know that. You know it. I know it. Why would we pretend we're not going to then mysteriously, re- you know, reveal it at minute 50 <laughs> and then act all shocked and surprised when you're here for the very first time? What happens, yeah. I can't afford that. Exactly. <laughs> Who wants to live like that? No, nah, no. Nah. There's a better way. There's a better, There's way. better way. And when you know the better way and when you – can successfully do the better way. And you've done the other way as a contrast. Like I've done the other way. I've done price at the end. Of course I have. Mm. Did it for most of my selling career. Yeah. <laughs> it gives you a conviction because I know the truth because I've lived it. Yeah. You know? yeah so sure. that's where my conviction, if it comes across that I have it, comes from. It's backed by the truth. Mm. I'm not asking you to trust me. I'm not saying just trust me, bro. You know, trust and truth are very different. Very different. You know, truth can be verified. Mm. Trust can't really. Just trust me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, you'll, see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Like, you'll see. verify it. I can't. That's why I'm using the word trust. For sure. Man, that's super valuable. I think um, it's been great, great to chat about these things. Yeah. Um, we, we saved the best for last then, didn't we? Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. You just kind of keep it rolling for a little bit. <laughs> and uh, then the, the that was a fun call, Pat. Uh, anytime you awesome. want me on, more than happy to chat with you. Yeah, let's create sure. that game dynamic that we talked about earlier. Yeah, and we'll, let's uh, we'll it, have some man. fun with it. Let's we'll see it. who puts their hands up and jumps in and who doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I reckon that would be cool. 